As you can see, I'm going to stand up because I'm always in shape. So that's a little cold now, so I'm going to do all the talking for him. But he's really good at talking, so once I turn the mic over, forget it, it lights out. Anyway, we are, uh, we're here very underprepared and uh, to show you some, uh, some drawing lessons. And uh, we're going to kind of just wing it a little bit. Hopefully uh, do some interesting stuff for you. And if you've got anything that you'd like us to teach you, if you've gone, you know, I've always, you know, had trouble with this or that, and we're curious, how can I get better at doing that? You know, we'll uh, we'll listen to you and uh, try and accommodate that, and uh, and maybe bring you a step further. So anyway, uh, this is Mr. Todd McFarlane, as you know, when he's already armed and ready. So um, yeah, let's uh, let's see what magic. Do you do, do, you, do, you do uh, uh, sort of rope drawing or, or uh, cone drawing? Which one you were to take? A, a what drawing? Like, I don't know much about drawing. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. So we'll go, we'll go through uh, some of the basics. Can you guys hear me if I just yell? Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. Everybody? Okay. We'll go through a couple of things, uh, uh, and, then, and then we'll get a little bit specific. What, uh, what our hope is is to be able to just do some generic stuff so anybody that kind of can draw can walk away with something, and then we'll get into some specific that sort of uh, uh, comic book stuff per se. So let's just look at a couple of the basics here. Greg can sort of walk through some of his methodology. There's sort of two ways to sort of draw in its simplest form. There's sort of what we call the cone way of drawing, where you sort of construct your body in, in cones and shapes, and you're using geometry. And then there's the other one that I call the rope drawing which gets you there, but it's more fluid, and you have a tendency to sort of draw and keep your lines uh, all together like this. You get to the same spot. So what I'll do is I'll show you how to construct an arm using the cone system, and then Greg will show you how it works using the rope system. And, and again, what, what, what we're trying to say is that there's no right or wrong way if you're going to be an artist. You have to find the method that's actually going to be the best for you personally. So the more you draw, you're just going to figure out how it is that you actually construct bodies and buildings. And I mean, if you look at Greg's stuff, when he does his first pass and mine, we have two different dramatic styles. But once we go and clean it up and we put the inking on it, then it starts to sort of look like what we call American superhero comic book. So how you, how you get to that process is, up to the, uh, is left up to the individual. So let's go here. So if I... Oh, Darn, I put it on the wrong layer. There. Technical difficulties already. Yeah. <laughs> Let me go here. Where's my bucket? There we go. All right. So we'll go here. All right. So I'm going to take layer two. Greg, you'll take layer three. So if we're going to construct. Uh, I want layer two. Okay. If we're going to construct. So he, here we go. Here's, here's, here's going to be a forearm, right? So think of this as your forearm here. And again, it's a cylinder. So we've got the cylinder there. Now there's going to be a bicep that comes up here. So the bicep again and the, and, and the shoulder becomes its own cylinder back up in here. Now again, if you could see behind here, you would be able to see the connection of that cylinder that's here. And then again, you have to come in here and you make a little bit of a box. And this is now going to be where your hand's going to be. This is, this is it before you put the fingers. And then you actually do these little tiny cylinders down in here, and pretty soon you get into the, construct, the, the construction of what looks like now an arm. And, and what will end up happening here, and then you can put like another, another round sort of one back in here. And what that gets you is, watch this. I can come in here and I can bring that, whoa, easy text. So, uh -oh, oh, I'm not going to get there. I've got I to cheat my way through because I went in the wrong way. But. Okay, so now we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna bring this down, and you can you can you can adjust on your screen down so it looks like tracing paper. Can you guys see that? Okay, and so now when I come in here, and I go, okay, now it's time for me to actually start drawing, and I'll bring my pen down. Then that's when somebody like Greg and I will actually come in here and start going. Okay, here's the shoulder. Here's gonna be the shoulder muscle up in here. Here's gonna be the bicep that comes up a little bit of a teardrop. You're going to have the tricep back up in here. And then we start constructing the arm and putting the arm right where we want to get to. But we've got, we've got the basics. Nice one, Tom. We've got the basics. Oh. Can you hold that one, Ron? And I'll, I'll do right here. No, this. Okay. This. So it doesn't okay. slide on. Sure. Sorry. Thanks. 
So now you've got the basics here, and then you get the hand in here, and you start basically picking your outline of it. So what you want to do is you want to do what we call in comic books, and then a lot of other things called underdrawing, so that you get here, so that once you basically click off now the gray, you're going to actually have the drawing that you have there. So you've got your arm that's sitting up here. So if I click that off, then it starts with your, your, your cones and your shapes there. And the other way to get there, again, as I mentioned, and we'll let Greg do that one, is to just do it a lot more fluid and a lot more sketching, that you sort of draw it out, and then you start picking your lines from there. So, and, and I'd like to add that the interesting thing about uh, a, lot of, a lot of mistakes that are made with drawing is not having the uh, body be affected by perspective as the surrounding area, buildings, whatever, settings that the character's in. <coughs> The having this form broken down into cylinders shows you the perspective that the arm is falling in. And, and this method could be used to cite your entire figure to make sure it obeys the same perspective as the setting that you have their character in. Because you see a lot of times where, you know, the perspective, maybe the eye is low and you've got a, 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 a different perspective happening with the body. So you go, something looks off, I don't know what. And usually it's in the perspective. And this form, cylinders, forms, blocks, will help you really check your work. And if you start constructing the, the body too, you start to figure out how long each one of those cones needs to be, so it's in relationship with the body. So again, you know, there, there's the rule at some point that you've got your head, and then, and then your torso should be one, two, and about two and a half heads tall, and then your legs are about three heads tall. So there's there's always a proportion to make sure that you don't get out of whack so that you don't start drawing small heads and big bodies. And, and there's, you, know, you, you try and memorize where things break. And um, the elbow typically lines up at the break of the waist. And the uh, wrist tends to break up at the crotch. And so these are ways to help you go check your work. And then we all move in arcs. All right. All right. Everything's in arcing motion. So if I've got this lined up here, and I now want to draw the arm here, you can do a little dotted line, you know, mentally or whatever, to make sure that you're tracking right. And, and the same goes with the perspective, because the mark will still go in perspective. And so you've got it foreshortened this way. And it's a good way to check your work. And it helps to make sure that things are correctly lined up and in the right perspective. And if you got, let, me, let me just say, if you're ever in doubt about anything on a human body, they're, they're, use the mirror. I mean, it is, a, it is the greatest teaching device that you will ever come up with because it will teach you subtlety, right? Because, you know, again, and I'll let Greg go here, but we've, we've seen this leg before. We get a lot of portfolios. People bring us portfolios, and you've got a leg, and the, and the easy drawing is they want to do, like, you know, the lump, which we have muscle. Then you've got your knee, and then you go, oh, now there's muscles here, and, and they lump it. And what happens is they make the mistake of saying, that the inside and the outside muscle on your legs are in the same spot, and then you've got your muscles here with your calf is the same on both sides. It's just not true. If you look at your own legs, you're going to see that the muscle on the inside, let's say this is the inside, the muscle on the inside is lower than the muscle on the outside. There actually is the peak of the muscle on the outside is here, it, and, and the peak of the, of the inside muscle is here. So that, again, when you're drawing that leg and you've got the, the extra muscles up in here, you can't have those ones in there because they're going to get lumpy. And then this one is going to connect up here. We'll talk about the rope one here in a minute. But you need to start actually paying attention. Once you start getting basic, you need to start paying attention to the subtlety of where the muscles actually lay down. So right, every every here you go. artist who wants to be professional should study anatomy. It teaches you all this. And a mirror helps, and photographs help. You get a muscle and fitness magazine. Plenty of bodybuilders, you know, scantily clad, so you can see all the musculature, and uh, and take these tips that Todd's giving you.